Hello guys, welcome to today's video and today I'm going to talk about why the 2020 election is extremely important. As you can see I have the electoral map pulled up and it, at the moment uh, Joe Biden is really good, in a really good spot. He's po polling around what? Nationally he's polling around a 7% which is a bit much bigger lead than what Hillary had back in 2016 at this point. As things stand, there's a decent chance that Joe Biden might actually keep this lead up to election day. And if so, it would make the election pretty easy for him to win. But I want to see how these numbers stand after and during the debates, since this would be a pretty good uh, telltale sign of how the rest of the campaign will be like. Okay. But there is still time until the election, and it is still possible that either side could could win. Both of them have a chance to win, even though Joe Biden still has way more opportunities than Trump to win. There's still a couple of possibilities that Trump could have and still win the, the election. First of all, he needs to win at least one of these Rust Belt states. Minnesota and Michigan are pretty much locked down for the Democrats. He has to hope that Wisconsin has the same polling error, which I doubt, but it could happen. But Pennsylvania is the one that Joe Biden is pulling the best. I believe he's at a 6, 6.5, while the other ones are around a 7-ish. He would, of course, have to keep most of his states that he won back in 2016, but that is that is not going to be as things stand. He is at least going to lose a couple states, like Michigan, uh, Arizona, maybe Florida or North Carolina, maybe Pennsylvania. One could also argue that Ohio and Georgia might go for Joe Biden, but I'm I need to see where it stands near election day to see if if I categorize it as true flip states because my prediction at the moment is that they're going to be a tilt Republican. As I mentioned in my previous previous videos. And even if Joe Biden wasn't your first choice Progressives need to real, realize that there's if there's another Trump presidency, then it's going to be extremely hard for their policies to come to fruition. Because it's, look at this, uh, let's say they win Texas, uh, Arizona, Iowa, Ohio, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, or mm, let's say this. There's still a shot for him to win the presidency, as seen here. If it would be a slim, just a slim <laughs> to 70, which is the bare minimum. But I do think that he would need to do some, because at the moment, I believe Arizona will go blue. Maybe he can do something like that. But I doubt that he's going to get two of the Rust Belt states, maybe at most one. But I don't see it. Both, all of the Rust Belt states are polling about 6 to 7%, so it just doesn't look like Trump has an easy chance to even win the presidency at all. He has a small margin right here. Just a small margin. There's, there's still a couple possibilities but for an incumbent president it's not uh, not looking good at all like, like he could try he needs this he's not gonna get 300 and that's a fact 306 he's not gonna go above nor the same that the amount of votes that he got in 2016 if Trump wins then Trumpism will more than likely stay as part of the Republican Party for a long time. And if this scenario plays up, 
then, for example, Donald Trump Jr. would have a way better chance at running in 2024 or 2028 and probably winning the election if his father wins. So if you're a progressive that is not voting for Joe Biden, then you are just going to shoot yourself in the foot. And furthermore, a conservative supermajority in the and the SCOTUS of 6 to 3 basically means that there is not going to be any progressive policies going to come for decades or at best until there is court packing. But if not, we're going to see no progress on that regard for the progressives till the second half of this century, the 2050s for crying out loud, or until there's a time to pack the court, which I already said in this video, which is going to be even more challenging if Trump wins the second term. But what's more important, at, or as important this election, is the Senate. Even if Trump loses, but the Republicans keep the Senate, it is going to be way easier for him to stay in office, and this would mean most importantly for the Democrats less chance of court packing and no reforms at all and actually they're the repealing of a lot of progress made by them meaning that republicans would uh, have a super majority of six to three uh, the smart move for them would be to to put a right-wing female justice so then like laws for example Roe v. Wade and women's abortion rights would ironically be repealed chances are by a by a woman in a 5-4 ruling since I think uh, John Roberts since he is a Bush moderate Republican on this ruling he might join the liberal side this is why the Senate is so important for the Democrats not only that but as things stand it looks like it's going to be a slim majority at the moment. Only a 50 Democrats versus 50 Republicans. This would mean that if Joe Biden gets elected, Kamala Harris would be the tiebreaker in the Senate. Furthermore, if they want to pass legislations like making DC and Puerto Rico states or extending health care, they will need a bigger majority than 50, 51, or even 52 since it's likely that there are going to be some Democrats that will not want to vote with a party. For example, I doubt everyone is going to be on board to make Puerto Rico state, even if they're from the Democrat party. But it's more likely that DC will be made into a state, but any major legislations will have a hard time being passed since they need a bigger majority of 50. And they have to hope that they can have more surprises than what people think, meaning they would need North Carolina, uh, Maine for sure, uh, a surprise in Georgia or Montana and Iowa, and maybe South Carolina, which I, I think it's more likely Georgia will go blue than South Carolina in the Senate which would give them a 53, but they need more. They need as much as they can. Like a 54 would be ideal, but chances are they're not gonna win all of them. Maybe 52 at best, but there's, a, there's still a lot of time until the election, so. But this is going to be a democratic wave year, which is, might give them a better shot than in 2018, but we, we'll see. Well, for the House, it's it's basically a done deal. They have like a 99% chance of winning, and it's... Which is why I don't talk about it, since there is no point. No. And if Trump wins, more likely than not, not, not only is there not going to be any more laws passed for, for the left, there's going to be likely repealment of laws that, that are necessary for progressives if they want to expand those laws. How can you expand social and any kind of law if the law is not there? 
And if the election l seems, sorry, looks l illegitimate, and one side becomes a uh, more radical or anything similar to that degree there's a high chance there will be a lot of protests revolts and hopefully not there might be worse things to come and the, the problem is that whoever side loses is going to be really bitter protest and everything will happen for who knows maybe a month, a year, or even potentially even longer than that. Not only is this election crucial for the US, it's really important for the rest of the world since if democracy of the US either looks weak or is divided or whatever, then the whole world will see the consequences of that too. By seeing it arise in revolts, protests, and other things, I just hope that it doesn't get too violent to the point that it becomes unsafe to live in certain parts of this country. I and many others love this country, which is why I hope that whoever is the next president, they have to be safe and have protection against the unrest that will un occur post-2020 election. But whatever side you're on, your civil duty is to vote for the candidate that you believe will be the best for this nation as a whole. And as you can see, like, there's a lot of uh, paperwork. There's a lot of news of people saying, I feel sorry for Americans, which, or people are like, alarms as seen by these many headlines of experts abroad watching numbers go up alarm should americans be bored all these type of stuff which is not looking good for the u.s and the world is just seeing the giant united states is every day lose prestige and power and it's really depressing for them and the whole world to see Thank you guys for watching this video. Sorry if this became a bit of a ramble, but I just had to speak on what's on my mind at the moment. And see you next time. Bye.